Welcome to video 148, and now we'll write the state pattern script. All right, so I'm going to make a start by creating a new C -sharp script and call it npc underscore state pattern. Now the state pattern script is going to be responsible for initializing the AI states and then starting off with an initial state and handling quite a few um, uh, AI cases that uh, aren't handled in the state scripts. And you'll see that uh, develop uh, pretty soon anyway, over time, over the next few videos. Now in this video, this is just part one. So I'm just going to start by filling in the variables and then the empty methods. And then the next video will fill out the rest of this script. So to begin with, uh, a set of variables that are used in decision making. I still have more to bring in. Let's go through them. Private float check rate uh, is equal to 0.1f. Uh, private float next check. So these are going to be used in update to just control how often the AI will do its stuff. So that just makes the system more efficient because if you have it running, you know, the AI checks the AI behavior every update. Uh, then it's pretty consuming, uh, performance consuming. Anyway, continuing on, public float site range is equal to 40. Public float detect behind range equal to 5. Public float melee attack range equal to 7. Public float melee attack damage equal to 10. Public float range attack range is equal to 35. And you, all of these you can change in the inspector. And anyway, continuing on, public float range attack damage is equal to 5. Public float range attack spread uh, is equal to 0.5f. All right, so I should just quickly say what all this stuff is. Sight range is how far the NPC can see to detect uh, other characters, other NPCs, or the player. Uh, detect behind range is supposed to be... Uh, if the player gets that uh, close or whatever gets that close behind the enemy, then they may detect or whatever. Uh, and then melee attack range, well, that's uh, pretty obvious what it is, how far away it can attack from. I think seven's a bit too much, actually. I'm just going to put that down to four. Uh, damage, uh, that's self-explanatory. Then range attack range is when should the NPC stop walking towards the target and start opening fire. Uh, range attack damage, that's also self-explanatory. Uh, then range attack spread, now this is to do with, uh, to add a bit of randomness uh, to the shooting. So when the enemy or whatever it is, the friendly AI starts shooting, uh, they won't precisely hit uh, their target. It could miss or it could be off. So that's what that's for. Then we have public float attack rate uh, is equal to 0.4f. Public float next attack. Public float flee range is equal to 25. Public float offset equal to 0.4f. And public int required detection count is equal to 15. Uh, so our attack rate uh, is yeah determines how often the enemy can attack per second. And that's what the, where the next attack comes in as well. Uh, you've got their flee range, how far they're going to try and keep their distance uh, from whatever is pursuing them. Offset, well, we'll see what that's for. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's probably to do with um, uh, the ray casting. And then public int required detection count uh, equal to 15. Uh, that is um, uh, that is so that when the enemy sees a potential target, they don't automatically start uh, shooting at it or attacking it. They, they stay in the alert state for a little bit until uh, it's successfully detected 15, so in this case 15 times, that look, I've seen that thing, the target 15 times, it's definitely, definitely uh, something I should be pursuing. So that's what that is for. Uh, so it allows the player to have some ability to, you know, like uh, run a short distance or something, and then the enemy would see something, but not be certain that it's actually uh, a target to shoot at. All right, so some more variables. Public bool has range attack. Public bool has melee attack. Public bool is melee attack attacking. And then uh, some more. Public transport uh, transform my follow target. Uh, then an attribute with the square brackets hide an inspector. Public transform pursue target again hide an inspector. 
public vector 3 location of interest uh, again hide in an inspector public vector 3 wander target again hide in inspector public transform my attacker uh, so my follow target is uh, for example, if you want friendly AIs to follow you, then you give them a my follow target, as in yourself, the player, and then they will follow you. Or whatever it is, you can set enemies to follow another enemy, for example. Uh, then public transform pursue target. Once they've uh, seen a uh, possible target and confirmed that that is an enemy, they will then assign that to pursue target and start pursuing. A location of interest is just for uh, wandering around and also for alert state. So when they see a possible target, they will take that as a location of interest and start walking towards the location of interest and see if they can find anything there. Uh, wander target is, well, is just used for wandering around. My attacker is used to inform uh, friendlies that, hey, something is attacking me, uh, for example, and it'll, the location will be given. And then the friendlies will go to that location to check it out and see if there is an attacker at that location. Okay, well, still heaps more variables to go. Now, these are used for sight, public layer mask, sight layers, public layer mask, my enemy layers, public layer mask, my friendly layers, public string and array, so square brackets, my enemy tags, again, another array, public string, my friendly tags. So uh, the site layers is um, pretty much what you want the uh, the NPC to be able to, able to see. So you would ignore, for example, uh, ignore Raycast layer and ignore, like, for example, their own layer. So enemies shouldn't uh, have their vision blocked by en other enemies in front of them. So then in, I use the site layers to control that. And then my enemy layers, that's very obvious. So, for example, for an enemy NPC, the player... A layer would be an enemy layer, uh, my friendly layers. Uh, so then in that case, like the, uh, for the enemy AIs and other enemies who are in the enemy layer, they're, of course, friendly to them. And then public string, my enemy tags, and my friendly tags. Uh, you'll see their implementation uh, soon enough. Okay, so some references now. So we have here public transform and array, square brackets, waypoints public transform head, public mesh renderer, mesh renderer flag, public game object, range weapon, public NPC master, so a reference to the NPC master script, just call it NPC master, and then a square brackets and attribute hide in, in inspector, public nav mesh agent, my nav mesh agent. So waypoints, you assign them in the inspector, so you place waypoints in the scene, and then the um, uh, AI, if it has uh, nothing to pursue, nothing to follow, uh, well, it will then um, uh, start navigating around the waypoints. If you don't give it waypoints, it'll just wander around. Uh, public transform head, so the AI will look at any target, so once it has a target, it will actually look at it, and that's why we have a reference to the head of the uh, model here. Uh, the mesh renderer flag, uh, the cubes above the um, AIs, they're just for us, for the our debugging, really, just to see that um, it's behaving correctly. So we'll see green for patrol and etc. Uh, the range weapon, public game object range weapon, that is uh, the weapon that the NPC carries and will be a part of um, later on. We'll see it get once it implemented all the way at the end of the chapter. They will use the NPC will use that range weapon for attacking. Uh, and then of course NPC master. That's uh, nothing to say there. And nav mesh agent. Once again, nothing to say there except it's the nav mesh agent on the uh, prefab. Okay, still quite a few more variables to go, and uh, these are used for state AI. So this script, the NPC state pattern, is attached to the is attached to the NPC game object, uh, along with the NPC master. And what is going to happen is that uh, each of these are going to be uh, instantiated, and they'll just be living in memory, but associated to that uh, NPC. Then let's go through them. So public NPC state interface, uh, current state. So this is what we'll use. So what I'm going to do is I'll, in update, I will say that whatever the current state is, 
run the update state inside of that script. So that allows us to have all of these state behaviors, but only one of those scripts is ever running at a time. There's no update method in them, so we're not wasting any resources doing any kind of checks. So it makes our AI system uh, more sensible and more efficient and also easier to debug as well. Uh, the next public NPC state interface, captured state, public NPC state patrol, so that's a reference to the patrol script, patrol state, public NPC state alert, alert state, public NPC state pursue, pursue state, public NPC state melee attack, melee attack state, public NPC state range attack, range attack state public NPC state, flee, flee state, and you can see the others. So next one is NPC state struck, so struck state, NPC state investigate harm, investigate harm state, and the follow, follow state. Now to make things easier for myself for while recording this video, I'm just going to get rid of these methods and paste in the empty methods that I'm going to need. Uh, so let's start with them. So void awake, you'll need that. Void start, void on disable, void update, void set up state references, void set initial references, void carry out update state, void activate patrol state, void activate flee state, void activate struct state, and pass in a parameter, int dummy, you'll see that later, it's to do with the uh, damage application, and then it's always passed a, in those events, it's always passed a int. In this case, you don't need the int, you just need the to listen to the event. But anyway, you'll see that later. Uh, then a uh, I enumerator, so a coroutine, I enumerator, recover from a struck state, and I just put inside so it doesn't throw up an error while we're working away. Yield, return, new wait for seconds, and I just passed in 1.5. Ooh, I hard-coded that. That's pretty bad. But uh, yeah, you can make a variable up above if you so wish and put in the uh, time to wait there. And then uh, public void on enemy attack. This is called by the melee attack animation. So this is back from the, uh, uh, from the uh, past when we uh, set up the enemy uh, scripts in the past in a previous chapter we had set a event on the melee attack animation for the golem and that event will uh, look for a method called on enemy attack and that's what that is it's just simply carrying over uh, then public void set my attacker transform so pass in the parameter transform attacker uh, public void distract uh, pass in the parameter vector 3, distraction position, well, distraction pos, I just put it as. Okay, so that is sufficient for this video. I'll just save that, go back to Unity. All right, and of course, yeah, it will say these things because, yes, it's not being used yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, attach the uh, NPC master script on. We'll get rid of the enemy master later. Uh, when we actually fill in the other scripts. And then with the NPC scripts, just drop in the state pattern as well, and just leave it as it is for right now. And uh, we'll continue in the next video.